Something that a lot of exercise physiologists talk about is that every time there's a major games on or a major sporting event where fatigue gets mentioned, the only explanation given for fatigue is lactic acid or lactic. And it's annoying because it's quite a long way removed from the truth. So you hear, hear about people swimming in a sea of lactic as they're approaching the finishing line or, or something like that. Or you see them winding up or, or tying up as the lactate starts to take hold. And it's not actually true at all. So that's one of the things that really pushed me to think about, well, how do, how will we explain this better? My takeaway message for commentators and members of the public, if they ever hear the phrase swimming in a sea of lactic acid, it's worth remembering that it's not lactic acid, it's lactate. But also swimming in a sea of lactate is not a problem because lactate is a molecule that's received a really bad press for no good reason, really, because it, we think it might be protective uh, of the fatigue process. And it's a really useful molecule as an energy source, as a signaling molecule. And therefore, we really ought to see lactate as one of the good guys. Now, there is a molecule we can start talking about. The real bad guy, we think, is inorganic phosphate. When you're trying to produce energy in the muscle, you break down a thing called ATP. And you need to make that ATP up again because there's not a lot of it in the muscle. So to do that, we break down a thing called phosphocreatine into creatine and inorganic phosphate. And when you're working really hard, you do that a lot. And therefore, you accumulate a lot of inorganic phosphate. And we know that inorganic phosphate or high concentrations of inorganic phosphate can result in a loss of muscle force. And that is the dictionary definition of fatigue.